going on YouTube? Today's video is going to be an update on what's in my cue case. First, let's go ahead and take out the cues out of my case. I'm going to go ahead and start off with... This one is my plain cue. I'm going to go ahead and pull them all out and pull out the shafts. This is one of the shafts. This is the back of the shaft. And we'll go pull out the brick cue. This is one of the brick shafts, another brick shaft, and I have a jump cue. This is the shaft, and then another shaft for another jump cue. And then let's go ahead and talk about my, um, my cues first. I'm going to go ahead and start off with my plain cue. This is my plain cue. This is a brass pin with a radial um, radial thread. It's a three eight. You could also say three eight by eight. And this is a rosewood. Has a thin black ring here, so that I can match it with my shafts. And it goes into curly maple. And then it goes to the butt sleeve. That is a rosewood. Also, it has a hopi ring with a just a phenolic um, butt cap, and of course a Southwest style bumper. I also tap these cues when I make them so that I can put um, a Predator style extension bumper, but I don't really like using extensions, so I just put uh, a regular Southwest bumper just for the weight. And this weighs um, less Together with this shaft, it weighs 17.5. And this shaft weighs uh, 3.5. So this one is the carbon shaft. Has a thin ring in front, but if you notice, I also, when I built this shaft, I inserted the phenolic inside the shaft itself so that it, it's not just the ring. <clears throat> and then it goes to the front. This one's a T34 with a G10, and the G10 is actually um, inserted, and this is just for sight and for looks, but that's what holds the, the front end together. Then I just got a clear pad. This one is the Horo leather tip. This is a prototype, it's a hard tip. As you can see, it's a green one. I trimmed it down, still doing some testing, to see how it feels. I actually like how it hits. It's very consistent. As you can see, I've been playing with it and it doesn't mushroom. That's why I like hard tips. That way they're uh, less maintenance. You actually just have to play. This one is my backup shaft. This is a Kimwood or torrified wood. Just a regular maple that's torrified, roasted. Also did the same front end, G10 in the front, T34 with a clear pad, but this one is a milk dud. I make my own milk duds. It's a La Pro, and I just leave them in milk, and then I press it for 24 hours. This is like a pro taper. This one I also built, and you have the thin ring. This is also inserted into the wood, that way it's not just floating. So these are both 29 inches long, also with the butt and making it a total of 58 inches. But those are my plain cues. This one is for my brake, and I got two brake shafts for two different, um, different uh, disciplines. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead with the butt itself. This one's all carbon fiber. I ordered the blank, build it, and this is how it turned out. I need to sand these down. This is from the super glue, but that's an easy fix. But I have the Hopi ring, have my signature here. Um, phenolic, Southwest style bumper. This one I did not tap, it's just a regular insert. Of course I have no weights on all my cues. I hate putting weights on cues. They just make noise. So this one's carbon fiber, insert it. This is how I build them. Um, this one is the phenolic inserted. And then of course with a brass brass pin. This is also radial. And then we'll go to the shaft. 
This is another carbon fiber shaft I built. Same style, phenolic in the back. But this one's a G10 in the front with a hollow tip in the front. This one's 13 millimeters. And the reason why I use the Horo on this one, this one is for a nine ball break. And I, I use a, a cut break on my nine ball, especially when I play in tournaments, I'll use a cut break. And, it, and the Horo tip is perfect for cut breaks, and I love it. And this one's also a prototype. So I'm also testing this one, but I always had a Horo, Horo tip on my other shafts. This one's another carbon fiber Shaft I built. This one is just straight G10, G10 tip, and it's also inserted. Same with the back, how I have my thin ring. This is also inserted. The reason why I have a G10 on this one, not a hurl tip, is this is like for a 10 ball break or when I'm breaking hard on 8 ball. And this is what I'll use for like for cut breaks and everything. I'll be using the horo tips. Even if it's an eight ball, I'll, if I go do a cut break, I'll reuse this tip. So that's why I have two different shafts for one brick, one brick butt. <clears throat> this one is my jump cue. This one's a three piece jump cue. This one I also built. This one matches my plane cue, as you can see. The reason why is I built this first and I messed up cutting it when I was um, making the taper. It didn't taper right. So instead of wasting the wood, I converted it into a jump cue. So that's why you see curly maple here and a brass pin. Of course, I put an indent so I can use it for a dart. And this is where it got tapped so I can have the extension. This is also a, a radial pin. This is also brass, but this is an all thread and it's, it's a lot shorter. So it doesn't go as deep and, it does, and it's a lot faster to remove in and out. versus having a long radial pin. Then of course the Hopi ring, and you got the phenolic in the back and a Southwest style bumper. And I also rounded these corners off so it's not as sharp, and that way it gives me that um, for gripping. And that's how I designed my jump cues. If you follow me on my Facebook and also my YouTube channel, I have a lot of shorts on my jump cues. I've been selling jump cues, and this is, this is how you'll, I'll grip it here for the long jumps and for the short, short jumps, it would be this way. And I could also do it this way. But this is the shaft that it goes with. This is also 13 millimeters long. This one is a super thick uh, walled shaft compared to this one. There are two different shafts. You can say this is almost conical. This is a pro taper. And this one I sanded because I didn't like the paint it came with but it had a little streaks in the black. It doesn't affect on play, it doesn't affect on anything. I just didn't like the feel. I wanted that smooth feel like how this one felt. So I sanded it and made it of course 29 inches long. But they're all the same construction in the front end. The G10 is also stemmed all the way to the carbon fiber. This is just for looks. It's, and of course it has a horo, horo tip. This is the white storm. One of the best um, tips for jumping, and I love it. And of course, the way, same way I do in the back end, but this is the shaft, the shaft itself. But like I said, this is two millimeters thick on the wall, very stiff. Uh, it has no flex, makes jumping super easy. And this is what I um, sell the, um, the jump cues with, is the two millimeter thick shafts. This is another jump shaft, this time, I, I put a brass ferrule, but the, G, <clears throat> the G10 also goes inside. So this is just a plate that's actually like a T and it goes all the way inside the um, carbon fiber. With a, and then in the front is a Horo White Storm again. And same thing, sand it, didn't like the feel of it. And same construction in the back end. The thin ring, but it's also inserted. And you can see, you can see how stiff this is. These are very stiff shafts. This is another handle. I make this one's only 12 inches long, a little bit over 12 inches. This one is a purple heart with a brass pin. 
and a little nub for holding it. This one is if I don't feel like breaking down my my long jump cues, and I just want to do a short short jump because this one actually has a little bit more weight to it, making it easier on the darts. When you're doing a dart, you can see. Biggest thing is why I like brass pins in the front is when you're holding it on the dart, it just naturally wants to go down. So you're not, you don't have any, there's no effort of keeping the shaft down. It just automatically aims down and you just have to, less effort for jumping. And that's how I designed my jump cues, just the little indents here and with the little nub. So you can also have it this way and it totally makes the shaft go down, especially for jumping. Especially with this brass pin, having having a that pin brass brass ferrule in the front, help, helping it also bring it down. So these are my cues. Let's go ahead to what else I have. Now I've been playing with my glasses. So this is where I keep my glasses. These are actually pool glasses I got. Start wearing glasses makes it a lot easier for me to shoot so as you can see they're not regular glasses they're elevated on oh, that way you don't have to look over your glasses you actually look through your glasses when you're shooting pool i also got the case and i know i got a cleaning cloth in here too because you gotta clean the glasses so this is the my wife gave me this this is i got from korea i got all this from korea when i was stationed over there and this is what I got. This is just a regular sunglass case that I hold it through my um, pull case. Of course, I got a um, little ring. This is how I touch it. And I got a cloth just for the hands, especially when it comes to the summertime. I'll have this wet and then I'll wipe my hands. That way my hands don't feel sticky. I don't like playing with a glove, so I'll just wipe my hands wipe my hands and wash it and then that way I can play with the next round we'll go to the top I got these are my joint protectors I've been lazy I haven't made any more joint protectors but this one is just for my playing cue of course and this is how it'll look so that's just the playing cue and been lazy so I had, just had extra predator and I'll just put that on my uh, playing shaft on my... but I don't really use joint protectors anymore I just leave them all inside and with this JB case it's amazing and it secures the cues so it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't bump around an extra one so I'll probably use this for my um, brake and one of my brake shafts but that's what I have in there. These are my essentials. Um, always have to have a bridge just because if you go to different um, pool halls, if you go to different tournaments, they don't have a bridge, you always have one. I'll use this sometimes, especially on league. We'll pull this out and have all our, um, this is a cue holder. You just set it on the table, it holds, all, it holds five cues what I have got a patch for hurl tips this one is to scuff my tip itself I don't like using the needles this is probably the best one of the best scuffers out there once you know how to use it leather to just varnish the tips and then let's go in here This is where I keep my chalk. That is my uh, my YouTube channel. So it'll be on my belt loop and then snapped on. And this is all the way outside. Pass, this one passes my shirt. So when you see it, it'll be past my shirt. That way I can actually use it. And then I just put magnets on it and then just uh, steel washer I glue it if I need to take it off just pry it off and it'll come off and then glue it on another chalk and I always cut my chalks halfway down that way when I chalk it 
I'm actually brushing it on this way. And then rotate it. That's why you have that little, it's not digging in when it chalk. And have extra chalk, just in case the pool hole doesn't have any chalk. And I always have some. I actually used this one before I had that one time and I just used it. But this is what I have in my case and this is what I play with. And I want to thank my sponsor Horo Tips. And thank you Nelson for sending me the care package. And hopefully this video is informative. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave a comment down below. And thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe me. Don't forget the thumbs up. Bye bye. What's going on YouTube? Today's video is going to be a video on